Hey guys, Mr. Backwork here. This is part two of lesson 4.4. There are two objectives for this video. We're going to use reference angles to evaluate trig functions, and we're going to evaluate trig functions of real numbers. Okay, so here's what we're going to do to help us figure out these trig functions at any angle theta. We talked about those reference angles in the last video, so we're going to use those things. Number one says we're going to determine the function value for the associated reference angle theta prime. Because remember, those theta prime angles are first quadrant acute angles, and we're supposed to be getting to know that first quadrant really, really well. After we have that function value, then number two says we might have to change the sign, positive or negative, depending on what quadrant our original angle theta is in. So here's what we're looking at for our first few examples. We're going to be finding the trig values at these specific angles. So for part A, we're going to look at the cosine of 4 pi over 3. Now we're going to find a reference angle to help us out so that we don't always have to rely on our unit circle. If we look at this 4 pi over 3 angle, it's a little bit bigger than pi. So in order to find the reference angle, we're going to take 4 pi over 3 and subtract off pi. Now we're going to need common denominators, so I'm going to make this 3 pi over 3. If we carry out that subtraction, we end up with pi over 3. So we're going to do the cosine of pi over 3. Now pi over 3 is one of our first quadrant angles that we're supposed to know really well. The cosine there, the x value there, is 1 half. Now what we need to do is we need to take a look at our original angle theta it's 4 pi over 3, which is a third quadrant angle. Cosines in the third quadrant are negative. So instead of a half, we need to make this negative a half to get our final answer. For letter B, we're looking at the tangent of negative 210 degrees. Now before I even get started finding a reference angle, I don't like dealing with negative angles, so I'm actually going to find a coterminal angle first. So remember, in order to find coterminal angles, we either add or subtract a rotation. I'm going to add a rotation here to help me out. So adding 360 degrees, we get 150. Now 150 is a little bit smaller than pi or 180, so in order to find the reference angle, I'm going to go 180 minus 150 to get a 30 degree reference angle. And 30 degrees is the same as pi over 6. So we're looking at the tangent of 30, or pi over 6, and the tangent there is root 3 over 3. And then again, we need to check our original angle theta to figure out if this is going to be positive or negative. Now we can either look at the negative 210, or I'm actually going to look at the 150. I know that 150 is a second quadrant angle, and tangents are negative in the second quadrant, so we get negative root 3 over 3. Here in our last example, we've got the cosecant of 11 pi over 4. Now this one's a lot like that last one where this angle is a little bit too big to work with. So what I'm going to do first is subtract off a rotation. So I'm going to subtract off 2 pi to help me find a coterminal angle. Again, we're going to need common denominators, so I'm going to make this 8 pi over 4. So 11 pi over 4 minus 8 pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4. Now finding the reference angle, this is a little bit smaller than pi, so I'm going to take pi minus 3 pi over 4. Common denominators here, I'm going to make this 4 pi over 4, so we're looking at a pi over 4 reference angle. As far as the cosecant goes, I'm actually going to deal with this as a sine first, because sine is just the reciprocal of cosecant. So the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. But in order to do this cosecant, we're going to have to flip this fraction over. So the cosecant of pi over 4 is 2 over the square root of 2. Now if we work on rationalizing this thing, multiply top and bottom by root 2. So we get 2 root 2 all over 2. And these 2's are going to cancel out, so all we have is the square root of 2. Now as far as this sine and... I guess for that matter, this cosecant, since we're looking at a second quadrant angle, sine and cosecant are both going to be positive in the second quadrant. So I'm not going to make a change to this answer. I'm just going to leave it as the square root of 2. Taking a look at a couple more examples. First one, we're doing the sine of 5 pi over 3. So I'm going to find that reference angle again. 
This one is actually a fourth quadrant angle, so it's really close to 2 pi. So I'm going to take 2 pi minus 5 pi over 3. Now we're going to need common denominators, so 2 pi is actually like 6 pi over 3. So we end up with a pi over 3 reference angle. If we're doing the sine of pi over 3, well again, first quadrant angle, the y value there is root 3 over 2. But if we go back to our original angle theta, this is a fourth quadrant angle, and sines should be negative in the fourth quadrant. So I'm going to make this negative, root 3 over 2. Next one, we've got the cosine of negative 60. Again, we don't typically like to deal with negative angles, so I'm going to add on a 360 rotation. So really, we're looking at 300 degrees, and if we go 360 minus 300, we've got a 60 degree reference angle. Now doing the cosine of 60, well 60 is the same thing as pi over 3, the x value there is 1 half. This original angle is a fourth quadrant angle, this 300, and cosines are positive in the fourth quadrant, so I'm just going to leave a half as my answer. Looking at our last one on this page, we've got 11 pi over 6 as our angle, and we're going to do the tangent. So again, this is really close to 2 pi. So I'm going to take 2 pi minus 11 pi over 6. Common denominators would make this 12 pi over 6. And that makes our reference angle just pi over 6. Now pi over 6 is that small 30 degree angle. If we're doing the tangent of pi over 6, we end up getting root 3 over 3. And this is a fourth quadrant angle again. Tangents should be negative in the fourth quadrant, so we get negative root 3 over 3. Taking a look at these next couple examples, we're going to revisit some of those trig identities that we talked about at the end of 4.3. So we've got theta being a second quadrant angle. We know that the sine of theta is 1 third, and we're going to use our trig identities to help us find the cosine and the tangent. So looking at part A where we want to find the cosine of theta, I'm trying to think of an identity that relates sines and cosines together. And that Pythagorean identity comes to mind. So we've got the sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta equals 1. Well, we know our sine value is a third, so I'm just going to plug that in. But we have to square that and then add on cosine squared of theta and that equals 1. Well, squaring a fraction, we square the top and the bottom, so we get 1 over 9 plus the cosine squared of theta equals 1. And now we're going to solve to get cosine all by itself. So I'm going to subtract the 1 9th over to the right-hand side. Now we're going to need common denominators. So this is going to be like 9 ninths. So if we do that subtraction, the cosine squared ends up being 8 ninths. And we want cosine to be all by itself. So I'm going to square root both sides. So left-hand side is now the cosine of theta. Similar to when we're squaring fractions, the way we do square roots is we're going to square root the top and the bottom. Now the bottom is going to be really easy because the square root of 9 is just 3. The top might be a little bit trickier, but we can simplify down the square root of 8 to 2 square root 2. And then the last thing we need to check is what our sign should look like, whether it's positive or negative. And earlier we said this was a second quadrant angle, so cosines in the second quadrant should be negative. So we get negative 2 root 2 over 3. Then we need to check out our tangent value for part b. As far as tangents go, we know the tangent of theta is going to be sine over the cosine. We have both of those values. We know that the sine is one third. We just found the cosine and said that it was negative two root two all over three. But now we're gonna have to simplify this down because we've got small fractions inside of big fractions. Each one of these fractions has a divided by three. So I'm gonna multiply both of those by three. So we do a little canceling and on top, now we've got one. On bottom, we've got negative two root two. Now, just like before, we can't leave the radical on the bottom of the fraction. So I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by the square root of two. On top, we get just the square root of two. 
on bottom. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just 2, but we've got this negative 2 out in front. So negative 2 times 2 is going to be negative 4. So there's our tangent value. Square root of 2 over negative 4. It's a second quadrant angle. Tangents should be negative in the second quadrant. This one is, so we're good to go. Take a look at our next example. We've got theta being an angle in the third quadrant, and we know the sign there is negative 5 over 13. We're going to use our trig identities to find the secant and the tangent. Now this one is very similar to the last one, but in part A of the last one we were trying to find a cosine. This time we're trying to find the secant. Well, remember, cosine and secants are just reciprocals of each other. So I think actually finding the cosine for part A is going to be really helpful for us. So I'm going to use that same Pythagorean identity that I started with on the last example. So sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. We know that our sine value is negative 5 over 13. So we'll have to square that and then add on cosine squared of theta, and that equals 1. Squaring this fraction on top, negative 5 squared is 25. On bottom, 13 squared is 169. Plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. Now if we subtract the 25 over 169 over to the other side, common denominators, this is going to end up being 169 over 169. So we get the cosine squared of theta equals 144 over 169. And then we have to square root both sides. So we get the cosine of theta equals, well, the square root of 144 is 12. The square root of 169 is 13. This was a third quadrant angle, so the cosine is negative using this cosine to help us find the secant of our angle theta, we just have to flip this fraction over. So it's negative 13 over 12. We still need to find the tangent, so for part B, I'm going to do the same thing I did on the last one, where the sine over the cosine will give us the tangent. We know the sine value is negative 5 over 13. Earlier we found the cosine value, to be negative 12 over 13. Now, I see a couple negatives, so these are going to become positives. I see a couple divided by 13s, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 13 to get those things to cancel out, so we get 5 over 12 as our tangent value. These next few examples are going to be using our calculator to evaluate some different trig functions. So we're going to do the cotangent of 375 degrees, we're going to do the sine of negative 4.1, and we're going to do the secant of pi over 9. For the first one, the cotangent of 375 degrees. First thing I see is that it is in degrees. So we need to hit that mode button on our calculator and arrow down to make sure that we are in degree mode. To do the cotangent, that's 1 divided by the tangent, of, now I'm just going to type in 375. Since we switched our calculator to degree mode, it's going to read this as a degree angle, and we get 3.7321 if we were to round that off to four decimals. As far as the next one, we're going to do the sine of negative 4.1. Now that doesn't say degrees, so we have to assume radians. So when we get back to our calculator, we need to go back to radian mode. Then we type it in, we go sine of negative 4.1, and we get 0.8183, if we round that off to four decimals. Last one is also a radian angle, so we can leave our calculator alone. We're supposed to do the secant. So that's 1 divided by the cosine, and our angle is going to be pi over 9. So we just type it in as is, pi divided by 9, close the parentheses, and we get 1.0642 if we go to four decimals again. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below, and thanks for watching.